How are we going to get higher yielding wheat on the farm, Darren? You talked earlier about how farmers are going away from wheat. I can understand why, because corn and soybeans are worth a lot of money. But if a farmer wanted to continue raising wheat, what steps should he be taking to boost his yields and profitability to the next level? Well, there's certainly a lot of uh, crop consultants and different firms that have made their living entirely on helping farmers get better yielding wheat. And they've done so with great success. But there are just a lot of really small, simple steps that farmers can take to improve their wheat yields. There isn't just one thing that you say, huh, you're just planting the wrong variety. Boom, I put the different variety out and I get 50 more bushels. No, that's not <laughs> how it works. Yep. But it starts with careful planning all the way from which variety of seed you're going to buy and what planting population to everything you do to that seed once you put it in the ground. So one of the things that not a lot of farmers are doing yet around the country is using controlled traffic patterns like we talked about a little earlier in the show. And the way that you can do this in wheat is having tram lines. Basically, you're redirecting seed that would go right in your tire track over to the sides so now you have a nice path that you can always follow to do your spraying because in an intensively managed wheat program you're probably going to be back out there five to eight times during the season and you might say whoa whoa I can't spend that much money look I don't care what I spend on the farm what I care about is how much return I can get for every investment I would never ever tell you to go out and spray without that spray paying for itself most all of the time. So you have to look at each individual trip and say, is this worth it? Is that worth it? And we'll talk about some of those things that you might consider spraying for. All right, well, let's just start out with the seed, brand. And when that goes in the ground, it's important to protect it. Now, back uh, 10 years ago, a lot of guys weren't using seed treatments, but over the last few years now, they've grown in popularity tremendously because we've seen some differences in the field. Yeah, but you know, a lot of farmers are still just using fungicide and that's not enough anymore. Well, a lot of wheat is grown in dry areas and guys say, well, you know, wait a minute here. I'm probably not going to have as much disease problem out there because my ground is dry. Well, that's the wrong answer. You're going to still have disease pressure. It may be different diseases that hit you versus a wet year, but you're still going to have diseases. So you need to use a good fungicide on that seed treatment. The other thing that you need is an insecticide on the seed treatment. And what we're running into more and more in wheat takers is wireworms. And the pressure has gotten so heavy that a standard low rate or base rate of an insecticide just isn't enough. Well, it's not just wireworms, Darren. It's also other bugs. There are some flies that you can control early in the season. Aphids. And, yep, aphids, grasshoppers, just a number of different things because there are systemic insecticides now. So literally that insecticide gets absorbed by that plant, by the roots, and it will move up through the plant to help protect the plant for several weeks. In addition to insecticide though, Darren, you know, besides the base fungicide, I like to talk to guys about biological products. It's kind of the new wave in agriculture. Every big company you may have noticed is buying these little biological companies because all the big guys have figured out, ooh, you know, if we're gonna take that next step in yield, we need to not just look at herbicide, insecticide, fungicide, we need to go to biological products as well. Well, one of them that we've used for a number of years has been quick roots, and that's definitely proven itself in a number of ways. First of all, we're seeing a difference in the root growth. We're seeing more root hairs, and we're seeing those root hairs explore a larger volume of soil. So when we're doing plant tissue analysis where we've used quick roots versus just a few feet over where we didn't use quick roots, we're seeing more nutrients get into that plant early, and we're seeing better early growth and better yields in the end. Well, Darren, I loved how the uh, train was tooting its horn there. Uh, well, it was cheering for me, Brandon, saying, go, Darren, go, Darren. Well, you I, bet. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, just like that. Go. Yeah, so I don't know if it's going to continue tooting its horn when I bring up this next point, and that is you want to use a good pre-emerge herbicide. So we're talking about things like prepare and sharpen, and this is in crop rotation. So Darren and I were just talking off camera a little bit about Olympus and Maverick and PowerFlex, and I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're talking continuous wheat, I'm fine with things like Olympus. Olympus and Maverick. There's no well, there's a lot way of guys I'm using, using them in rotation. There's a lot of guys using Olympus as a pre-emergent continuous wheat. Yes, in continuous wheat, that's fine. But a lot of farmers now are trying to rotate something else in, get a broadleaf in with the grass crop. That's a good way to go. So rotating wheat with soybeans or wheat with lentils or something like that. Well, the other thing we're doing a lot of right at that same time is fertility. And when we look at fertility programs in wheat, a lot of guys say, well, I'm using this blend of N, P, and K, and that's what I'm doing. And they're forgetting about micronutrients. And we're seeing some excellent gains adding micronutrients to the program, things like Micro 500 or, or TJ Micromix. There are a number of different micronutrient blends that you can add. We really prefer the blends 
rather than trying to add just copper or just one specific micronutrient. A lot of times we get things way out of balance out in our fields really quickly. The other thing though, besides micronutrients, is looking at sulfur because wheat does need a lot of sulfur and we're just not getting sulfur through air pollution like we used to. So you Darn. probably, yeah. I feel real bad about that, Brian. <laughs> well, we have to spend money now. So the point is anytime we're raising wheat on our farm, we're absolutely putting sulfur on there. So sulfur, micronutrients, NPK, you can't forget about those things. One of the things that's changing in a lot of the post-emerge herbicide programs is really the removal of 2,4-D from the program. And you see that with some of the new herbicides that have come out with Wide Match, with Husky. Yeah, you could add 2,4-D back in with something like Wide Match, but why would you do that? You've got things like Addition Broad Spec. You've got other tank mix partners out there as well that just do an excellent job controlling a broad spectrum of weeds where 2,4-D, you don't really need it. And you'll start to notice a little difference in your wheat because 2,4-D can be a little hard on Well, the other thing is, let's not forget that 2,4-D has come way up in price in the last few years. It's kind of funny because I'll talk to my dad every once in a while about stuff and he'll say, oh, let's just use some cheap 2,4-D. And I go, dad, Banville's actually probably cheaper now than 2,4-D. What? I can't believe that. Uh, it used to be eight times the price. Well, I know, but things have completely flipped. 2,4-D is expensive now. You can do some of these things like Darren mentioned with addition, throw that in with Wide Match or Husky instead of the 2,4-D for the same money or less and get better control without the crop damage. Well, the other thing is just timing on all of this. Like with grass control and weed, it's critical to do a good job on things like wild oats and some of the problem grasses that we have in wheat. But you gotta get out there early. If you let that stuff get a little bit big, it really can hamper your yield. Yeah, you you can still kill it in a lot of cases and at the end of the year you say well man I don't have any weeds left out there but my yield was disappointing you already lost that yield early in the season that's the real challenge with wheat all right I know we're going through a whole bunch of different things and we'll get into more details of this as the season progresses here but we just wanted to get you thinking about a lot of things you can do to increase your weed and yield the last two things I've got is using insecticide anytime you see harmful bugs out in your field you got to scout though and then finally using fungicide on our farm we're spraying fungicide three times we spray at herbicide timing at flag leaf and then again at heading if you're doing those trips and you're coming back also sometimes adding some fertilizer uh, throwing some herbicide out there again like I said earlier you're talking five to eight trips across the field in season so that's why you absolutely want those tram lines well there's certainly a lot of things you can do in wheat to influence yield and while we're saying you know a whole bunch of different ideas here don't think oh man I have to do every single one of those things on my farm even if I'm in a different part of the country you may not maybe your program already has a number of those elements and you just need to look at this or that we're just trying to get your mind working just a little bit to think, wow, there are some possibilities out there. There are some things that could help me because there are a lot of things you can do now that can help improve your wheat. Well, one of the most important things to improving your wheat is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 